Hi, we are now uh, getting toward the end of this chapter of Work versus Work. Uh, I've spoken a couple of times now about the salt satyagraha because it is such a good example. It failed to work, but it did fantastic work. And uh, at the conclusion of this section, we have a famous formula, I hope it becomes famous anyway, that we've invented that uh, violence sometimes works, but never works, never makes things better. Whereas nonviolence also sometimes works, but always works. And that's why if you dedicate yourself to violent solutions, you end up lurching from crisis to crisis. Whereas if you dedicate yourself to nonviolent solutions, or I should say a little more accurately, to the extent to which you can dedicate yourself to nonviolent solutions, because that's an important point. It's not simply a black and white matter in terms of your practical action, in terms of your mental state and so forth. But to the extent that you can be nonviolent, uh, it will always add to some improvements uh, down the line. So uh, what I'd like to do now is move on a little bit to a famous iconic part of search for a nonviolent future, and that is the escalation curve. Since uh, coming up with this model and having it on page 108 of Search for a Nonviolent Future, we have uh, developed it to some degree. Uh, I think it's an extremely important uh, analytical tool for people who are in nonviolence, both on the theoretical level, to understand sometimes why something was effective or it was not, and secondly, of course, on the practical level, to be ready to move on to the necessary responses and do the needful. And uh, the classic example of something that uh, caught, caught us flat-footed, as it were, was the res resistance to the Iraq War that finally launched in uh, 2003. It was one of the largest popular demonstrations ever recorded. 12 million people were on the march around the world. Uh, the then president of the United States publicly declared his intention to ignore them. He said, I don't have to pay attention to these people. They're just a focus group. That should have been, if we were all really aware of how nonviolent dynamics work, it should have been a signal to us that, okay, we are no longer in phase one where you are in dialogue and you're being listened to and you can use the techniques of demonstration and uh, petition. We must now move on to Satyagraha. And we have a beautiful quote from Gandhi where he says, things of fundamental importance to the people cannot be gained by uh, moving the head only. You have to move the heart also. And I might add at this point that even to know that there is a a heart, a deeper consciousness that can be reawakened re and responded to is part of what we call the new story. And one of the reasons we haven't understood the importance of this boundary is uh, we are so embedded in the old story. More on that later. But um, it, this curve does show that we need to have flexibility in our responses and we need to have the ability to match the degree of violence with the degree of nonviolence that we're ready to employ. And stage number three, the final stage, is even if our self-imposed self -imposed suffering has not awakened the opponent, uh, there is something that uh, we can undertake which is almost qualitatively different and that is the willingness to lay down your life. Uh, we sincerely hope that things will never get to this level, especially if we have built up our constructive program uh, well enough in advance to give us that momentum. But if necessary, and if things are that important that they cannot be left alone, they must change, and you're absolutely dedicated to that, you do have this final power that you can employ. Now, we, I've just been talking about a mistake where we use stage one tactics when we were in stage two. But there's also a kind of mistake where we use stage three tactics 
when we're, we're still really in stage one. And that is people go on a hunger strike and say they're going to lay down their life. They often are not really capable of doing it. There are several rules for going on a hunger strike, uh, fast unto death correctly. We can talk about them in a little while. But your use, people will start at the most extreme end of the curve as though they were completely dehumanized in the eyes of their opponents instead of uh, assuming their rationality until proven otherwise. And I talk about uh, Maximilian Kolbe, Maximilian Mary Kolbe, who is a great, who is now a saint, a uh, saint of Auschwitz and a great hero of the nonviolence world. This is a case where he actually did have to forfeit his life in Auschwitz. Uh, long story short, because you can read about it in the book, he uh, volunteered to die for another prisoner, and that went completely contrary to the entire uh, worldview and passion that those prisoners had at Auschwitz. You were struggling to survive with all that you could command, and uh, no one ever compromised their own safety. But here's somebody who goes in exactly the opposite direction. And uh, this has led me now to the conclusion that in addition to having an instinct for self-survival, which we all do have, we also have an instinct for self-sacrifice. It's embedded in nature and human beings will employ it, will implement it in uh, the right circumstances or the wrong circumstances. So he volunteers to die for another prisoner. He does in fact die a few days later uh, and it doesn't look as if he accomplished anything but if you get the testimonials from the men who were in the camp with him, he gave them a tremendous uplift of spirit. And this is not just an emotional factor because the thing that kept you alive in Auschwitz is whether you had a will to live or not. So he probably ended up saving thousands of people. And I'd like to just add the point uh, now that uh, we came so close to not even knowing this. But someone did manage to recapture some of the, to capture some of those testimonia. And so this shows us also how many cases of nonviolence there must have been, which we do not know about, partly because our radar was not tuned to pick them up. Okay, good. So let's keep on tuning our radar and uh, I'll get back to you soon with uh, our next factors. Thank you.